NFL draft fans, welcome to the channel here at Utility Sports. We are covering our day one winners and losers from the 2022 NFL draft. It was a wild, crazy, unexpected day that had so many twists, turns, and different outcomes that we were not ready for or expecting, including one player that we uh, weren't quite aware of his uh, potential landing spot in round one, uh, as well as a few trades and everything that just kind of, you know, really reshaped the draft in a way we had not imagined. And I'm sure the same was true for you. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe. A lot of work goes into these videos. Uh, and of course, we're very excited to be talking about our winners and losers. So Austin, let's jump into it here with winner number one. You designated the Kansas City Chiefs. Break down why. Yeah, Trent McDuffie is an absolute stud at the corner spot. A little undersized is the reason why he fell. But if you look at the Kansas City Chiefs, there was a definite need in the corner room. They addressed that um, by getting him very, very late, considering where he very well could have gone. And they also add George Karloftis, which at one point, even before the season had started, was considered potentially be a top five selection. Uh, just wasn't as you know athletic as people had thought he might test. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a very, very productive pass rusher and a guy that, um, you know, continued to grow as a player as his time went on at Purdue. And I look at the Kansas City Chiefs, they had two bit, two huge needs going into it. They needed edge. They also needed corner and they might be addressing linebacker later on in the draft. But I really like what Kansas City was able to do in this draft. Uh, this team is going to be dangerous heading into next year. Uh, once again, they reload. Uh, people expected wide receiver for this team. However, they come out with two really good defensive players. Right. And Kansas City here, obviously, like you said, goes with two good football players and teams that are in the business of adding good football players usually do well once the regular season begins. Moving into winner number two, I designated the Detroit Lions, excuse me, as a huge winner in this year's draft for a few reasons. First of all, edge Aiden Hutchinson goes to them second overall. That's just the right pick. You get the kid in state coming over from Ann Arbor. He's going to be playing his football now in Detroit for Dan Campbell. We have a video of him up on the channel. We just think this is a perfect fit here into Detroit. And then likewise, they traded up with the Vikings to pick number 12, an in-division trade, not something you typically see. But with that, I feel like they gave up a limited amount of assets. And in that deal, they trade up and get Jamison Williams, who's a really, really dynamic wide receiver who can take it to the house at any point, any given time. Really great breakaway speed, good change of direction, very fluid hips. And I think Detroit, a team that we had really circled from the beginning of the year uh, as a team that needed more wide receiver help. They got DJ Chark this offseason, add Jamison Williams now. And I think you have some weapons to play with here if you're Detroit. Even though you did move on from picks 32 and 34, I still feel really, really positively about the ending outcome here of both Aiden Hutchinson and Jamison Williams. And then we move into winner number three, and we've got the Baltimore Ravens here now for you, Austin, uh, a franchise that I know you really, really like. Yeah, Baltimore is a franchise that continuously does the right thing. And I said it over and over during the course of the draft. Selecting Kyle Hamilton at 14 was not necessarily, quote, a need, but it was something that was necessary for this franchise when they see talented players on the board, they don't ever hesitate regardless of potential fit or, you know, really the, the overall team needs. They go ahead and just take best player available. And it's been a great strategy for them uh, under John Harbaugh. And it continues to be that way. Kyle Hamilton very arguably could be a top five player in this class, maybe, maybe even top three player, uh, really depending on his career path. But looking at him here at number 14, that was huge. Marquise Brown. And a fourth to Arizona for 23 was an absolute steal of a trade, in my opinion. I know Lamar Jackson and other people in Baltimore might be a little upset about that. But that was able to net them Tyler Linderbaum. Um, looking at it here, I, I think that at the end of the day, they did very well in their trades. Very, very well. And also just who they selected with you know Tyler Linderbaum and Kyle Hamilton, two players that should be highly regarded amongst the, the mock draft community and just people that are fans of the draft. Uh, they did super well, and they did put themselves in a great position next year to potentially win the AFC North. You start buying stock in the Baltimore Ravens. That secondary this year is going to be special. And then winner number four, a team that uh, we don't usually talk about in a positive light here on the channel, but that's the Jacksonville Jaguars. Austin, you're a big fan of these guys, but I'm actually the one who designated them as a huge winner in tonight's first round of the NFL draft. And I know this might come as a surprise to some people why I'm designating them here. I think Trayvon Walker at number one is the right selection. It's not the safe one. 
And it's the one that's you know, pretty risky. But I think that Trayvon Walker could end up becoming a franchise changing type of player. His athleticism is off the charts. And he's someone who I think if you tap into that potential could become an all world type of edge. Now there's going to be some, you know, growing pains in here. I think it's going to take a little bit to get there, but I'm very confident that Doug Peterson is the right coach for this team moving forward. And then not only did they do that, they moved back up with Tampa Bay to get picked 27 and added interior linebacker, Devin Lloyd, who I absolutely love as well. And Austin, I know you do too. This kid's really special. Didn't test super well at the combine specifically with his 40 time. But then when you look at this player on tape, he plays very, very fast. He plays at a good game speed. He's very instinctual. He lives in the backfield in run situations. And he's also very, very skilled as a pass cover linebacker. So finding someone who is as uniquely talented as Devin Lloyd, that's hard to hap- ha- hard to come by. And then also when you look at the fact that they added Foye Aluakun as well into that linebacking room already, I feel really, really good about this Jaguars defense. I think they're going to be a really good young story coming up into the NFL this next year. And I think Lloyd, Trayvon Walker are going to be the headliners for that defense. And now moving into five, you've actually got my New York Jets here, Austin. So you designated them as a big winner. Talk about my Jets. Don't break too much about them. Yeah, well, you look at Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson, two guys I had in my top five on my big board. They're just that talented. Sauce Gardner is going to be a shutdown corner at the next level. Not only does was his film great, but also his testing numbers were phenomenal. The physicals are off the chart. Him being 6'3", 200, and being able to move like that is just insane. Garrett Wilson is just such a uh, surgical route runner, a guy that can do so much after the catch, which Jet fans should be really, really excited for. And then Jermaine Johnson, another terrific edge rusher, a guy that tested well at the combine. The, the tape shows it. He's got the numbers to back it up. He's the complete package there as a as an edge. And I think when you look holistically at what they've done, they were probably they probably netted the the most talented group of all the all the players tonight. You know, I think the New York Giants did very well in it in this as well. However, uh, collectively of the three players that they got, this is a dangerous group coming in, dangerous rookie class. Uh, the New York Jets did a nice job putting themselves in this position to do it, but I like how they were aggressive and moving up for Jermaine Johnson at twenty six. Right. I I feel like this is one of the perfect outcomes here for the New York Jets. Also an honorable mention to the New York Giants. You shouted them out in that clip. Now let's transition into our losers. And I nominated the first loser here, Aaron Rodgers. Even though I think the Green Bay Packers drafted good players tonight in Quay Walker and also Devontae Wyatt, both coming from Georgia, specifically to help with their run defense. I, I just look at this and yes, I know the Packers didn't really have great wide receiver options at their picks. But let's not pretend like the Packers couldn't have been aggressive to move up. We saw numerous teams move up this uh, evening, making trades for wide receivers. You know, you looked at the Lions, who I nominated earlier as a winner. You look at uh, a team even like Philadelphia, who traded up for A.J. Brown, uh, traded up to get A.J. Brown, excuse me. There's a lot of moves that have happened tonight to put teams in positions to have really great wide receiver play. The Packers were very, very quiet. I think they got good players, but Aaron Rodgers, if I was him, I would be very upset at the franchise right now. Not only one first round pick they passed on wide receivers, two. They didn't use either of them to get talented playmakers for Rodgers. Two-time MVP, no first round wide receiver since 2002. Doesn't really add up to me. I think they've got to do a little bit better. We'll see if they do in the future. It feels like we've been counting on that forever. And then loser number two here, New England Patriots, Austin. What you got on them? Yeah, I just, I'm confused. I really am. Uh, losing J.C. Jackson was a big issue this offseason, especially playing in the division where you're trying to compete with the Buffalo Bills. I felt that they needed to take a corner. Andrew Booth Jr. was sitting there at 29. They opted to go with guard Cole Strange, a, a player that uh, very well could have still been available in that third round, potentially, maybe even fourth round. Um, so I, I just, I don't love the value. I don't love not getting a corner which I, I get Bill Belichick is he's, he's a mastermind when it comes to X's and O's, but at the end of the day, I just, I really question this selection. I definitely thought that Andrew Booth Jr. was a super, super good option for them, uh, but they opted to go with the guard instead. Yeah. I'm sure you all noticed if you were watching the draft, ABC nor ESPN had film ready for this kid. So they weren't expecting him to go on day one. And then we weren't expecting him to go on day one guard. Cole strange definitely was a strange selection indeed. Moving on to loser number three, and we actually designated the Vikings fans here as a loser. 
not necessarily that the, the move the Vikings made was absolutely terrible. And I think they recovered pretty well drafting Lewis Seen out of Georgia. I think he's a very talented safety, very hard hitter, runs, runs the field really, really well, very instinctual player. But the fact that they traded down from 12 to 32 in that deal with the Lions that we talked about earlier and only got limited assets back in that, that moving down 20 spots in round one is a significant type of move. We've seen teams do that in the past and net future first round picks. The Vikings did not do that, did not get a first round pick back. And this was the first trade of Quasi Adolfo Mensa's tenure with the Minnesota Vikings. And to make a move like this, it's a little questionable, specifically when you had Kyle Hamilton on the board there and passed on him to later draft the safety. I think, you know, overwhelmingly more people would have preferred Kyle Hamilton over Scene. Not that Scene's going to be bad. I think Scene's a pretty solid prospect. But Kyle Hamilton, I think, clearly was the best safety in this year's class. And to pass on him to draft another one, with limited assets coming back in just seems a little questionable to me. Plus Vikings fans had to stay up a little bit later to watch the, the selection at number 32. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video of our winners and losers. Let us know in the comment section who your winners and losers are from day one of the 2022 NFL draft. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more. And again, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you in the very next utility sports video.